Welcome to part two of my two-part video series dealing with the popular atheist trope, there is no evidence for God. Now, often atheists will use the claim, there is no evidence for God, as justification for a professed position of a lack of belief in God. They will present this as an indication of great intellectual humility. In the absence of evidence that would sway them one way or the other, they simply abstain from judgment on the matter of God's existence. But they are still making a knowledge claim, only instead of making a claim about the non-existence of God, they're making a claim about the non-existence of evidence for God. Both are negative claims of identical form, and neither would carry any less of a burden of proof than the other. When the atheist asserts that there is no evidence for God, and challenges you to convince him otherwise, he is appointing himself arbiter of all evidence. When he refuses to be convinced by any evidence you provide, he will demand that you accept his starting premise as true. This is not a position of intellectual humility, it's a position of ultimate intellectual arrogance. So it is necessary to recognize there is no evidence for God as a claim carrying a burden of proof, and to insist that the atheist either sustain the burden of proof for this claim, or withdraw it. To assent to the premise that there is no evidence for God until the atheist is convinced otherwise is to assent to the premise that there is no evidence for God full stop, as any atheist who would claim that there is no evidence for God has clearly already made up his mind and will refuse, on principle, to be convinced of any evidence for God. Now when you hold the atheist's feet to the fire on this issue, you will typically encounter a handful of canned responses that are as stupid as they are predictable. Sometimes they'll try to rephrase their original claim into a seemingly more modest variant. Sometimes they'll use this variant to try to support their original claim. This doesn't help them at all. At best, they end up with another unproven claim. At worst, they end up with a circular argument or a non sequitur. Sometimes they'll misrepresent the situation and claim that you claimed God exists, and they're asking you for proof. This is nonsense. By asking the atheist for evidence, you're not even committing yourself to the position that God exists. An honest atheist could ask a fellow atheist why they think there's no evidence for God. We're dealing with people who think a claim can be used to support itself, and who don't understand the difference between a question and a statement, so a debate about Thomistic philosophy probably isn't going to be very productive. In order to have even the hope of a successful discussion, the atheist must first be disarmed of the presumption of their claim. To this end, I've devised a little bit of Socratic reasoning you can use to preface any such discussions. So the atheist says, enough of this jibber-jabber, where is your evidence for God? And they always use this kind of patronizing language, your evidence for God, like they expect you to submit your little uh, show-and-tell presentation. So you say, first let me ask a question of you. Is it possible that there are some people who will refuse to be convinced by any amount of evidence? Now, a quote-unquote skeptic is likely to respond yes to this due to his experiences dealing with anti-vaxxers and young earth creationists and the like. So you say, Therefore, the existence of evidence cannot depend on any one person being convinced, correct? He responds in the affirmative. Therefore, the existence of evidence for God cannot depend on you being convinced, correct? Bingo. I would be more than happy to engage in a good faith discussion about evidences for God. However, I reject the assumption that there is no evidence for God until you are convinced otherwise, and will refuse to engage in any discussion that begins with this assumption. I hope you found these videos helpful. Please like and share, and be sure to subscribe to the Deflating Atheism YouTube channel and Facebook page. Thank you.